Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 21st of October. I hope you all had a great trading week and uh, getting into the week ahead. So in the United States, the economic calendar will feature PMI releases, durable goods orders and reports on existing and new home sales. Across the Atlantic, investors will closely watch Germany's IFO business climate index and consumer confidence figures for the euro area and UK. Also, manufacturing and services PMI data will be in focus for Australia, Japan, Germany and the UK. In Canada, attention will be on the Bank of Canada's interest rate decision and retail sales data. So uh, lots going on this week, some potential market moving news, especially with the uh, Bank of Canada's interest rate decision as they are expected to um, to really kind of cut by quite a large amount, 50 basis points. So let's see what happens this week. So uh, looking at the uh, technicals and some, uh, some of the past and future fundamentals, uh, starting on the US dollar, and this is the equally weighted dollar index. And um, looking at the uh, equally weighted dollar index, and um, I do believe that the dollar is a bit more of a buy than a sell. And um, not only fundamentally has uh, 50 basis points been priced out of the market over the past uh, couple of weeks since we've had some really good uh, non-farm payroll data, as well as some um, other data that has supported, um, uh, I guess, uh, 25 basis points rather than 50 basis points. Hence the reason for uh, 50 basis points being priced out of the market. What we also have um, in the United States, if we look at the uh, US dollar news channel um, in the private members area, Discord area, is that um, we've got the elections within the next uh, two and a half weeks and hedge funds are ramping up bearish positions against currencies from the yuan to the Mexican peso to speculate that Donald Trump will win the US presidential election next month. And so, um, you know, they, 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 this, that paragraph is basically saying that the dollar is going to be a buy really against the yuan and the uh, Mexican peso. Um, those are like a, kind of like um. Uh, 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 I guess, uh, more risk on currencies. Um, and it says here, the dollar dollar calls are rising in popularity. So if you don't know what a call is, it's basically an option, um, a direction of an option uh, a trade where you've got calls and puts. And calls are basically when you think the market, you know, you're going to go long on the market. And so dollar calls are rising in popularity in the $300 billion plus currency options market. Um, positions that gain in value if the greenback rises against tariff threatened peers, traders say. So it started when uh, odds um, shifting in Trump's favor last week, said Sub, uh, Saruba um, Tandon, Singapore based global head of FX options at Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, the most popular expression have been topside dollar offshore yuan followed by downside euro dollar and topside Mex uh, dollar Mexican peso. So downside euro dollar meaning um, dollar buys euro sells. So the jump in options trading echoes moves by some of the world's biggest companies to hedge their currency risk as the election date of November 5th draws near. Former President Donald Trump is edging ahead of Democratic nominee Kamala Harris in betting markets, putting pressure on investors to uh, game plan what a second Trump presidency would mean for assets everywhere. So hedge funds showed no clear positioning on the vote just over a week ago. So Trump said that tariffs, tariffs would help tremendously in preventing China and other countries from flooding the US with products. In a Bloomberg News interview Tuesday, he has previously threatened uh, across the board tariffs, including a 60% levy on imports from China and duties at uh, of at least 10% on the rest of the world. So um, basically the dollar is seen, um, uh, and a Trump win is seen as uh, the dollar appreciating, right? So um, options trades will likely keep surging 
um, says Shoki Amori, chief death strategist at Mizuho Securities Co. in Tokyo. Betting on a stronger dollar is an easy sell, um, considering it's also a haven. So any uncertainty in the lead up into the uncertainty around the election and as long as Donald Trump is seen as leading in the polls should um, support actually dollar longs. So, you know, the hedge funds are getting a, a starting to position themselves long as well. So um, really, I think the path of these resistance should be to the upside. So just really waiting for more of a pullback on the dollar, equally weighted dollar index. And then once we get that, or once I get that, then I'll look for dollar longs on uh, some of the other pairs. So um, yeah, the next, the, the next, um, demand zone really that I can see is going to be all the way down here I don't think the dollar will uh, fall as uh, in in terms of um uh you know unless um Kamala Harris uh, starts to you know pull back in the polls and it becomes a bit more even and a bit more undecided but I think as long as uh, Donald Trump has the edge the market sees that as uh the dollar appreciating so uh, if that continues, I will be continue to be more long on a dollar. I can understand why you would look for shorts, or you can look for shorts, but I think the direction of travel should be to the upside. Looking at the dollar yen, and the dollar yen um, did break above the uh, one dollar fifty area, which was seen as a bit of a line in the sand, um, one dollar fifty around here. Um, so let's see what happens but the um the japanese yen and there was some key inflation data that came out but it was a bit nuanced because even though it came in lower which um isn't um uh, supportive of a bank of japan rate hike um it was really kind of due to uh subsidies and so um it says here that japan's key inflation gauge slowed in september for the first time in five months ahead of the central bank meeting later this month where the board is widely expected to keep the interest rates unchanged um and it says here if the subsidies um uh, are ex or actually in fact i should have really uh highlighted this um, and it says the slowdown in price gains uh, largely hangs on government subsidies, thus it is likely to have limited amount of impact on Japan's uh, par policy path going forward. So um, basically what it is is that the uh, CPI going down was really based on government subsidies and um, those subsidies could end or extend. And it says here, if the subsidies are extended, it will bring down CPI, but it doesn't impact the price trend itself. Price trend being basically inflation, uh, says a senior executive economist. Um, uh, so we shouldn't be overly concerned about those moves. The BOJ decision is unlikely to change on this. So ultimately, the Bank of Japan um, is likely to hold this year and maybe into December. But um, uh, I don't think the uh, recent data has changed the trajectory of the Bank of Japan looking to continue to high rates over the medium to long term. So uh, 150 is a bit of a line in the sand, but we and we could actually see prices move to the upside. Uh, there has been reports of um, if if the if the yen does continue to weaken, uh, there could be also be some intervention as well. So um, let's see what happens with the dollar yen. But um, in terms of a direction. I would really expect the, uh, the, the the dollar to kind of continue to strengthen. So I think any pullbacks into uh, this area here, especially where you've got some sort of um, uh, level of uh, support and resistance within that demand zone, as that is a quite a wide area of, of demand. Um, so yeah, probably in and around there or the lower end, I think. Let me just move that up a bit. Where you've got some uh, support and resistance at the bottom end of that demand so potentially here but i think that is still on the high side of course right even though it pulls back there i'd rather wait for it to come down to the 147s if it does pull back into this area 
before looking at going long on this. But I'm not really looking to trade the dollar yen, um, not really on my portfolio. But if I was, I would look for that area as the earliest um, uh, zone to look for uh, buy trades on the dollar yen dollar swiss is something i am interested in trading and it's in my on my list of uh, uh currencies to trade now um i think the dollar should strengthen against the uh, swiss franc and again we've got a bit of a wide zone of demand but in that wide zone we do have an area of support and resistance around here so if prices do come down into this area here uh, I think that's going to be decent. So the 8540s is where I would look for some uh, some buy trades. And if we look at uh, the um, price over the past month as well, um, I think uh, in between a high and a low, right? I say I think, but in between a low and a high, um, you don't really want to look to trade at highs. You want to look to trade at probably about fair value or lower. So um, for me, Monthly fair value is um, is where I'd be looking to uh, take some trades, and that kind of lines up with that. So, yep, fundamentally, uh, the Swiss franc are continuing to uh, sell, um, as in intervene um, in their currency. The Swiss franc is still seen as quite expensive, so uh, that would be the path for least resistance for me. Is is more more upside, but if you do want to look for short trades. You are in a supply zone at the moment, quite a nice technical supply zone. But uh, fundamentally, I wouldn't necessarily buy the Swiss franc over the US dollar. Not not yet, unless, of course, maybe there's some sort of uh, Kamala Harris um, uh, win or, you know, she starts to um, uh, uh, increase her uh, her uh, her. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, in increasing the polls, basically. You know, people start to look to vote for her. Looking at the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, uh, again, part of these resistance should be more to the upside. Uh, so any pullbacks into this demand zone, um, nothing really uh, up at these highs. Although there is a demand zone there, you can draw a demand zone there. It's not really the um it's not really a, a strong area of demand until it makes higher highs and then just to pull back into that zone would be really where i would be looking to buy uh the cad again bank of canada are looking to cut by 50 basis points so um i think any pullbacks should be nice if you get a deep pullback then a move higher, then a move down into a demand zone. I think that area as well would be a very nice uh, zone to look for any kind of buyers. But it does look very expensive when we look at this from a monthly perspective. Um, we are up at these monthly highs, so um, I don't really want to trade up at these highs. I'm looking for at least a pullback to some sort of fair value before looking at um, uh, taking a position. Uh, moving on to the pound dollar so pound dollar uh, i was interested in in this until we did get some uh, not great data for the uh, for the pound although inflation uh, came in lower for the pound it um the uh, the uk's economy is doing actually quite well so it says here on i think it was the 16th um, of october the pound tumbled after softer than expected uk inflation that emboldened investors to bet on more aggressive interest rate cuts from the bank of england so traders are now betting on back-to-back -back rate cuts uh, at the bank of england's november and december decisions having previously favored only one reduction so they're pricing in two this is the reason why you're getting um, the pound kind of sell off a little bit against the dollar. Now, is the pound a sell against um, every single currency? Nope. Uh, against the, the dollar, yeah, probably um, it does look like the uh, dollar may strengthen going into the next uh, few weeks. Um, but uh, I think the pound is more of a buy against, for example, something like the euro. But this pair in particular, um, I'm not interested in it. I think it's too close to call. It's not as clear uh, in terms of fundamentals. Uh, I think they're both a bit neck and neck um, in terms of fundamentals and sentiments. So if you do want to be a buyer of the, uh, the, the, the pound, then you're probably looking at something like this. It's not a great uh, 
you know, way to kind of um, identify where supply and demand is. It's quite a tight range, but I would say from an intraday perspective, if you are looking at um, buys and sells, then you could look for a uh, move. The first area to look for is there, but even then, again, from a from a monthly perspective, it's still within that expensive area. So, zooming back out to the daily, I think the nearest area other than that is going to be right at these highs, and I can't see the pound really reaching um, these highs again, not for a while, uh, unless again the uh, the fundamentals kind of change. But for now, with what we know, with the Bank of England looking to price in or the market looking to price in a bit more cuts um, for the uh, for the pound, um, I would probably say the top end of this would be the area to look for some some short trades if you're interested in this. If you're looking for buy trades and buying the uh, sorry buying the pound, looking that. If you're looking to sell the pound and buy the US dollar, then you're looking at uh, this uh, this supply zone. So uh, not a great um, uh, trade fundamentally or from a technical analysis perspective. So not fantastic, but uh, there we are. Not every uh, chart is tradable. Um, pound yen, so pound yen uh, this week uh, really hasn't sold off. Uh, we haven't seen really much. Um, volatility when it comes to the uh, the yen uh, I would say it's um, maybe they're waiting for the uh, the announcement and the Bank of Japan's forward guidance uh, towards the uh, the end of the month but let's see but uh, at the moment again pound yen not really a pair I'm interested in trading fundamentally but technically you can see why you would look for short trades here that'd be decent a uh, bit of a stop hunt setup as well. Uh, if you go down to the lower time frames, um, but uh, if you're looking for some long trades and buying the pound over the yen, uh, then really I I would prefer to kind of wait for uh, maybe the one nine one nine two area and lower to the one nineties before looking at going long. The uh, euro dollar so euro dollar has now come down to the 10850s and we've seen quite a turn of events over the past few weeks and this is mainly due to the um the euro having a bit of a reversal in fortunes if you've been uh, watching my weekly videos you'll you'll know basically that the um the data for is the, the economic data as well for the uh, euro hasn't been great pmis have been coming out and, and they've been poor uh, germany looks like it's uh, in the contraction and facing a recession so the whole eurozone um, at the moment isn't looking great inflation has also come down so um the ecb ended up cutting rates um uh, last week and there's the potential for them to cut um 50 basis points is the rumor that is starting to circulate so i think with the uh with, with the dollar um and a, and a trump win uh, we could see further downside and in fact uh the, there is a rumor uh, saying that the euro could slide towards the parity, so parity would be basically all the way down at the uh, um, the one uh, euro to one dollar um, uh, price range exchange rate. I don't think that will happen, but the conditions for that to happen would have to be um, basically Donald Trump to to not only get president but to get all of the um, you know, the House and the Senate, right? But it says here, the risk of the euro sliding to parity with the dollar is mounting in financial markets after the week's interest rate cut and a stark reminder that, the, that a Donald Trump presidency could spark a global trade war. Um, so that would be a bit more risk-off sentiment as well. Just days after Trump suggested US tariffs could be aimed at Europe as well as China and other countries, European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde warned that any barriers would pose a downside risk for the bloc's struggling economy. On Thursday, she delivered a second interest rate cut in a row and sparked bets on even more aggressive reductions to come. So again, it's not looking great for Europe if they get into a trade war with uh, with the US. 
Um, it says here, euro dollar parity is definitely a possibility if Trump wins and goes full Monty on tariffs, says Michael Hart, senior currency strategist at Pictet uh, Wealth Management. Pictet and uh, Deutsche Bank AG no longer consider a scenario where one euro buys a single dollar to be far-fetched. So it's not even far-fetched. While JP Morgan, uh, Private Bank and ING see the risk that the common currency could fall towards that level before the year is out. So there are uh, some financial institutions, um, you know, projecting that we could see at least another 800 pips uh, to the downside. So, um, again, Donald Trump win um, may push that. So any pullbacks into an area where we've got um, some sort of supply, if like that, or if you see a, another move to the downside, let's say the price of move break past that uh, demand zone and then you get a pullback into what would be uh, a supply zone here right that's basically the two options uh, that you're looking at and I do believe that the path of this resistance should be more to the downside of course anything can change but um yeah that's where we are if you are looking to buy the euro uh, right now then of course uh, the this demand zone is actually a really nice uh, technical area to look for uh, buy trades but uh, I think the uh, the dollar has the edge over the euro. Uh, looking at the euro yen, so the euro yen, um, I'm in this trade still. Got trade updates coming as well as some new trades um, or one new trade this week. And the euro yen, I would have expected prices to kind of roll over. They've been in this in this range, what's known as an auction, um, for a couple of weeks now. But um, hopefully this starts to roll over soon. I do believe that with some more risk-off sentiment potentially coming into the market, uh, the euro getting weaker um, and looking to cut a bit further, hopefully this does roll over to the uh, to the downside. So I did get in up here. Again, I'll go over that a bit later in the video. But um, if you're looking to get involved in this trade, then you're looking at either a pullback into uh, you know, the higher area of this um, supply zone. And if you know how to trade stop hunts, then you're looking for a stop hunt above the, uh, the area. That's a very nice area, I think, for a stop hunt. So let's see. But I think, again, uh, prices should move more to the downside um, would be my estimation. If you are looking for euro buys, then I think you'd have to really look for a move around here. Uh, demand. Actually, in fact, there's some hidden demand in this area as well. So you could look for uh, either of these two zones to look for a buy trade. Looking at the euro pound and the euro pound, again, I think really the, 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 the trade should be in the direction, should be to the downside, meaning you want to be a buyer of the British pound. Uh, so really supply zones, quite a wide area of supply. Um, but the area that has confluence would be within this zone here so if prices do move up to that level of support 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 resistance i think that's going to be a decent area to look for some um a uh, short trade and maybe the 84 round number to look for a uh, buy um a buy trade for the uh for the uh, pound so a short trade on this currency pair um, no reason to buy the euro over the pound um in, in my opinion, but let's see. But let's see what happens. But that's really the uh, analysis. I'm interested in this currency pair. The Aussie dollar. Um, I've taken this off my list of, of uh, currencies to trade. Uh, main reason being is because as we head into the election, uh, maybe a bit more risk of sentiment. Um, the Australian dollar might, I think, would do well, but just not against the US dollar at the moment. And so uh, also as well with the uh, tariff wars that may come with uh, uh, China, um, the Australian dollar by proxy is likely to be affected. So um, I do think that 
this currency is not really uh, one that I'm looking to trade. But if you are, uh, whether you're going long or short, then you've got some options. You can either look to buy again at this if price is pulled to the downside. And if uh, we get a bit more of a pull back up into this area here, then that's going to be the zone to look for some sell trades. But um, again, not really a pair I'm interested in at the moment. Just because fundamentally and risk sentiment wise, the uh, we're in a lot of a bit more uncertain times, so um, I'd rather not. Uh, looking at gold, and gold is just continuing to make new highs, right? And again, that's due to uh, uncertainty in the market, a bit of Middle East uncertainty as well. So, really, I've uh, been saying this for a while now. Um, gold should be a buy so really waiting for a pullback into uh, this area of demand or if that area doesn't work then just looking for it's not a bargain then you're looking for that would be the bargain so uh, either way I think gold any pullbacks on gold the path of this resistance should be um, should be uh, should be bought and the S&P S&P keeps making new highs Again, really, the main reason for this is because of the U.S. economy and a soft landing um, approach. Also, as well, um, in a rate cutting cycle, the um, stock market, you know, looks forward to some cheap money, uh, lower borrowing costs. And so um, they think that they can outperform if they can borrow the dollar for cheaper and pay less uh, interest on it, then, um, you know, you put it in a higher yielding asset, right? And so really, again, the path of this resistance should still continue to be to the upside. The reason why this would change is if there is some um, some uh, fundamental reason in terms of maybe a Kamala Harris um, maybe not even a Kamala Harris win, but if there's maybe some sort of uh, um, data that economic data that comes out where a recession may be on the cards, right? But for now, it does look like the part of these resistance is to the, is to the upside. So continued buys, I would say the five, uh, six, eights are the uh, would be where I would be looking to trade. I know a lot of traders would look to take this trade, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Well, you can't but when looking at this from a actually maybe from a monthly perspective it's not bad you know it's not it's not the it's it's uh more towards fair value but i think a, a, a cheaper price would definitely be for me uh the better area would be somewhere down at these at these uh lows but um yeah i think uh waiting for a deeper or a better bargain to buy the s and p so uh, that's it for this week's trades. Now let's get into the um, the uh, uh, trade updates, five trades to go through and a uh, new trade, a new trade on the Aussie CAD. So uh, trade update on the um, on the Swiss yen from uh, from this uh, was it this week? This was from uh, this week. Actually, this should, this should really be in the uh, in the new trades matter of fact, but managed to get in on the um at this position here so that was where my entry was this was where my stop loss is managed to get a one-to-one -one on this uh, fundamentally the um i think the yen is in a better position than the swiss franc the setup itself on the daily you know was basically this area of supply uh right here there was also a decent area of um resistance support and resistance in that zone so um so yeah fundamentals was basically dictating that i think this should move to the downside and finally it has because i have been uh, shorting this for a, a, a couple of weeks matter of fact but uh ultimately only managed to get in on one position on this uh, took a one to one uh at 50 percent so took off 50 percent profit now this becomes a break-even trade and i'm just basically now trailing the stops so 50 percent uh taken off right now this becomes a break-even trade and um if the uh if prices do pull back and stop me out doesn't matter because i haven't lost anything right um i will be trailing my stops as well down as we uh as prices do move to the downside 
the euro yen um euro yen so uh this was a trade again taken on the uh, monday uh the daily setup was around here so no so this is definitely a trade update from um the uh, monday the 7th of october so this was the trade setup managed to get involved in this uh took profit on one of the positions and i'm in two positions i managed to get in on three uh but then price have literally just gone sideways over the past uh uh, weeks so not really any kind of update on this unfortunately still in a bit of limbo um just unrealized profit then lost in profit a little bit of profit at the moment but unrealized and so yeah waiting for prices to potentially roll over on this um on this trade uh new zealand yen on the daily again same with this so managed to get involved um uh, again on Monday the 7th of October on the hourly ended up getting involved in uh, this uh, that was my entry right there stop above the highs and uh, one to one on this um, uh, in terms of my target on this position is at 89.65 now I do have um, other uh, positions that I'm waiting to be filled as well so if we get to and i've got another four positions or three positions so if prices do come up to this area here i'll get triggered in and then uh, i'll just look to take some profit if we can get a reversal at any of these pen uh, sell pending orders right so if prices move up like this then brilliant you know what i mean i'll get involved in that and then i can get a one-to-one -one here and then swing trade the market order and uh, manage the manage the trades but if i get up to a one to one before prices hit the buy pending orders then what i'll do is i'll just cancel these orders and then i'll just take 50 percent off and then i'll just swing trade the market position so uh let's see what happens with this so it's just been going sideways for a bit um there has been a nice trade managed to take the rest of my profit off on silver so um again entering on the uh it's about the 10th of october again you can go back to uh last week's um analysis on this i had um taken um half profits off and then was holding half of the profits saw this late on the friday evening and um basically took profits off just before the market closed uh, this market is being traded unfairly so um you can see where prices are just not you know basically moving parabolic so when you see something like that um i don't really like it well i like it when when obviously it hits profits but um in terms of holding the trade i prefer prices to be traded fairly so fairly traded markets would be you know higher highs higher lows and things like that unfairly and traders know this is probably some sort of what's the what we call it fair value fair value gap or something like that um uh, when it's traded like this um uh it's the, the likelihood that you're going to see a, a pullback um is is greater so i uh, just took profits off literally before the market closed so i'm out of this position uh, this was a very nice trade so um took half profits then the rest of the profits off on the um on the friday evening and then we've got the euro aussie so the update for the euro aussie was i was in this trade from the uh, 8th of october uh, again hit a one-to-one -one on this took off 50 uh, 50% off of this position so this is now a break-even trade um, and then I re-entered again uh, entered into another position on the Thursday so uh, the Australian um, jobs report came out which was positive for the Australian dollar um, and so I ended up uh, selling here entering into another position and then um, I only managed to get in on a one position waiting for a one to one uh, which is i didn't quite hit it i think my actually my stop is around the same price so yeah the one to one was about here so prices came down quite close to it 
but didn't. But I do expect with, you know, again, from a fundamental perspective, um, the uh, uh, the Australian dollar to continue to strengthen as they're looking to um, hold rates uh, for the rest of the year. Well, that's what the market is pricing in. Whereas the euro, um, there are talks and rumours that the... Um, uh, the ECB could cut by 50 basis points in December, but they're, you know, regardless of whether they cut by 50 or 25, uh, they're cutting more than the Australian dollar. So I do expect some further downside. I'm not saying it's going to, you know, go down now. Could pull back before it does, right? Who knows? But ultimately, again, I've got some more positions um, lined up on this. So I've got a few more positions lined up. So if prices do pull back on this one, then I'll be getting in on um, some better positions, some better risk reward trades, and then hopefully we start to roll over. So there's that. So the update on that one, new trade on that, and then a brand new trade. Another new trade on this was the Aussie CAD. Now the Aussie CAD fundamentally for me uh, was, a, was a screaming buy. I posted this uh, trade setup on the... Um, I think it was the Tuesday and we spoke about it on Wednesday's uh, live group call with the uh, with the traders in the group and put prices pretty much pulled back my entry was right here stop loss below the low and my one-to-one -one target is here now again prices haven't pulled back just yet and it doesn't look like they will because when you get strong fundamentals um, or if you you know, prices move with the strong fundamentals, then you may not get triggered into multiple trades. Um, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, right? That's the randomness of the market. But um, with the uh, Bank of Canada expected to uh, to cut rates by 50 basis points, and we got some news that was um, supporting that the Australian dollar is unlikely to cut rates this, uh, this year, uh, prices should move to the upside. So if if prices do hit that one to one, then again, I'll just take off 50% profit off that trade, right? And then I'll swing trade it, hold it, and then I'll cancel as well these positions. So I don't have, I take the risk out of the market, no more uh, risk in that. And then this trade, um, you know, will just be a, a swing trade and we'll see uh, how far it can run in terms of upside potential. And I think it has a lot of upside potential based on um, dovishness of the Bank of Canada and a bit more hawkishness with the Australian Central Bank, the RBA. So uh, those are the trades. And um, yeah, that's it. I hope you all have a great trading week. Take care and uh, speak to you soon. Till the next video.